Welcome, everybody, to the Google Hangout, Keeping It Wild. I'm your host, Rutledge Wood. We're going to have a great time today. My friend Andy Bell is here, stunt driver. He's won the Baja 1000. He is over hanging out with Nick Huey from Toyota Product Marketing. What's up, fellas? I'll see you Hey, buddy. <laughs> Plus, hanging with me is Todd Bergson. He is from Toyota Product Planning. And we also have some very special guests and panelists sitting in with us today. First up, we've got Stephen Elmer. He's the editor of Auto Guy. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? We're doing great, buddy. Thanks. We've also got Slayton White joining us. He is the editor of Field and Stream Magazine. Good morning. And we've also got Steve Bloom here with us. He is the owner of toyotatruckclub.com. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. How are you? Oh, we're doing great, man. We're standing out here. We're in the mountains. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Now, fans, we sure appreciate you guys joining us. We want questions from you guys, stuff that you see, stuff you know into the show. But first, let's start with Stephen Bloom, who's got our first question. Stephen? Uh, yeah, so I've got a question about the enhancements that have been made for 2014. So can you tell us what are the biggest enhancements that have been sure. made to the Forerunner for 2014? You bet. I mean, you can tell this thing looks totally different. Todd, what are some of the things that are different about it? Well, some of the biggest changes are obviously to the front end. We, uh, we made some big changes to our limited, our trail, and then also our SR5 model, you know, to differentiate the models or the different grades. Sure. Uh, the wheels are have a, a new uh, gloss black treatment on our limited. We've got an all new wheel on our trail grade, and an all new wheel on our SR5 grade as well. We've got some new colors. This is uh, our nautical blue, our new Barcelona red, as you can see over there, and then uh, we've got a attitude black, which is. Specific Ooh. to the limited model. Turn enough the ad to. Well, I really like. I know we got the new headlights. Yeah, we went with a projector beam headlamp, which gives you a much better, more focused, uh, you know, vision at night. Sure. When you're driving in the dark, and then we also added LED tail lamps, which give better visibility when you're braking to the, you know, the driver behind you. Sure. We got the and power style. Too. We got the power window on the tailgate. You know, I love that. Yep, we kept that. And uh, we, plus the inside, you guys even add some more stuff on the inside too, right? We did. We added a, a soft hex material, uh, seating material for our. It's optional for our trail grade and our SR5, and we upgraded the uh, multi-information display as well. We added uh, a big um, optotron meter in sure. the center of the of the gauge, so you can you, you have menus that you can scroll through and a lot more information than than you used to be able to get. Sure. I mean, it looks great over there. But Andy, you're sitting in a new trail edition, right? Tell us about it. Yeah, this thing is absolutely amazing. This has every option stuffed into it that you need and a whole bunch that you probably don't even need. They're there for comfort. Nick and I are going to go for a little cruise. We're going to hit some of really difficult trail sections down here. I'm really impressed. We're in the Malibu backcountry, and I never knew there was such great 4 by 4 ing out here. we got rocks. we got gnarly hill climbs, and we're going to do it all in the comfort of this nice trail 4Runner. I'm excited. I know that this vehicle is capable. I know Andy is a phenomenal off-road driver, so teaming them up together as a team, I'm excited to see what uh, these two can do together. Hey, if I can do anything half as good looking as what Rutledge Shoes looks like <laughs> over there, I am going to be happy. Looking good, Rut. Hey, what's I the think, what's yeah. the breadcrumbs you guys were telling me you're going to start leaving? Oh, yeah. Well, one of the really cool new features this year on the Intune system here in the nav, we can actually press a button, and we actually drop little breadcrumbs, just like your little red riding hood, every little bit. So if you're going out, getting into the wild, keeping it wild like I like to do, I don't really pay attention to where I'm going. I'm just going. And out here, there's about 5,000 different trails. It'll help you get back to where you went off the trail, or if you just want to trace your route that you went on, you can actually look back, and we'll look back at the end of the day here and see where we went, how much fun we had, and what, what ways we could have gone. And the cool thing is, when you look in here, we're off the grid. There's no road showing up, and we're getting out here, and we're going to keep it wild. That's what it's, it's, it's all about. That. It's about going places. You know, we got our first fan question. This one's coming from a Forerunner fan. They wanted to know why is body on frame an advantage for off road, Todd? Well, your body on frame construction just offers a lot more strength and, you know, durability. And we, we are able to mount a much heavier duty suspension to the body on frame uh, construction. Um, we have a fully boxed ladder frame that we utilize on the Forerunner, so it's extremely strong. Great for towing, great for carrying heavy loads. 
And it's, there's a lot of advantages over some of the unibody SUVs that you see out there that really start as a front-wheel drive, and then because of inclement weather, they added the all-wheel or four-wheel on some of those. But this thing is, is really made to be durable, and we know articulation is so important off-road. That's one of the things that the 4Runner does so well. Exactly. Now, we, we have a system called KDSS, which is a kinetic dynamic suspension system. That allows the sway bars to... to um, allow more wheel travel when you're going off-road at slow speeds, um, climbing over rocks and, and uh, logs. We get to whatnot. dive into that in a minute. You know what, Andy, I think you guys should go ahead and hit the trail. So Show us what we're ready for. I, I thought you were never going to give us the go-ahead. Nick and I, are, we're sitting here like we're at the starting line. So we're going to take us down, and I think right away we start off on a pretty solid grade here. I mean, loose rock, loose sand, silt. We're going to get into – What's got to be about a 25 to 30 percent grade right down here. I don't know how much you guys can see, but I know you're talking about body on frame, and to me that kind of just means that it almost gives us one more level of separation between what the suspension is doing and what we're feeling here in the cab, right, Nick? And I'm feeling very comfortable. We got the AC on. I'm I'm sitting on the soft tech seats. I know the road is bumpy. I can see it, but it feels pretty smooth in here. All right, well, let's get to our next question. This one's coming from Slayton White. Slayton? For full off-road capability, as well as smooth around town handling, how does it accomplish this, and what is the advantage for outdoorsmen? I think Slayton was asking about how can the, the forerunner sort of accomplish all the different tasks, whether being good on-road, good off-road. How does it all work like that as a sportsman? Yeah, so as a sportsman myself, you know, I can appreciate the off-road suspension that we have on here. Um, the forerunner really is as is, is at home on the street as it is off-road. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our KDSS allows more wheel travel when you're off-road. But when you're on-road, it prevents, you know, um, sway, body sway going flat through a corner. It's very uh, confident feeling, very comfortable as a driver. It also uh, allows you to, to tow more. With the body on frame, you can tow uh, very com comfortably as well. Well, that's cool. Well, you know what? I think we can talk about it for a long time, but why don't we get down to Andy Bell, and Andy, show us how the KDS really works, buddy. Well, I'm glad you caught up with Nick and I right now, because we are entering the gauntlet right now, and what a good spot to showcase this KDSS. I don't know you guys see us up there? You, do you have any kind of uh, understanding of how gnarly what we're about to do is here? And we really need the KDSS system because we're getting really off camber. It's a really gnarly section. So by the sway bars loosening up and giving us more wheel articulation to make it up this thing, that is a heck of a hill. And it really just handles it no problem. And then when we get off the road back onto the pavement over here, it's really nice because it's up automatically and give us a nice ride that I'm so accustomed to going down the highway in. That was a great drive, Andy. Yeah, I mean that that obstacle was pretty intimidating. You did that pretty easy. I, I don't. I, I'd love to tell you it was my skill, but I have a feeling that it's mostly due to the forerunner handling that, Nick. Nice job, you guys. All right, let's get over to Steve Bloom. Steve's got our next question. Steve. Okay, yeah, I've got a question that comes from uh, a forum member, a uh, truck junkie, uh, who's wondering how the forerunner handles different types of terrain, like sand, mud, maybe even snow, and how would you rate the handling in these different situations? Yeah, good question. Todd, how does, how does it do that? Yeah, we have our, our multi-terrain select system, which uh, we have a, a knob in the overhead console, and you just turn the system on and select what terrain you're driving on, and the computers make all the, the adjustments to allow the proper amount of wheel slip so that you can make forward momentum. You know, it's, uh, it's, the computers are, are doing everything for you, and it makes it just real easy for you to, to just steer, you know, and keep sure. the vehicle going. It would probably be better to, to actually see it work. Well, let's do that. Andy, can you show us how the MTS system works? Absolutely, I can. We're sitting at the bottom of a pretty steep hill. There's a lot of loose rock at the bottom, then some loose silt at the top. Probably got a 15 or 20 degree off camber angle and some gnarly ruts at the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift out of four high Got into it. four low. And then I'm going to reach up to the dash here. I'm going to turn on my multi-train select. And it's just a knob right up here above the rear view mirror. And we can choose mud, sand, dirt. We can do loose rock, 
we can choose moguls or rock. So it right. depends on what kind of um, terrain we're coming up on. We can choose what we want. I feel we got a bunch of loose rock here, so we're going to start out with loose rock and give it a shot. And this is, I don't know how well you guys can see us up there, but this is pretty sketchy, pretty off camber. We got our right side way up over our left side. And then as we get halfway through the, the rock here, we're going to actually go to um, mud, sand, dirt to get us the top here. And this is a really sketchy little spot, really almost, I mean, I feel like what, top of a roller coaster yeah, right now. From this angle, it does look very sketchy. Um, but with the multi-terrain select, I have confidence in Nanny and, and the foreigner to really tackle this. Well, and we didn't even, I don't know if you noticed, we didn't a tire one time going up and around this. That's considering th this is a vehicle that my wife and I drive every day. I have confidence in it that she actually drives our 17 month old around town and goes, gets groceries, whatever. We take it on family road trips, which is one thing. And that's what you kind of think of it as. And then we just went and did a really, really gnarly section of very kind of high end off road trail and didn't even spin a wheel. And Andy, I noticed you basically changed terrain select in the middle of the hill. Is that a valuable option to have out on the trail? Absolutely. Because these aren't paved roads. These aren't even gravel roads. I mean, half of that was loose sand and the other was loose rock with, with a bunch of ruts in it. So the ability just to be reach up, really user-friendly buttons right here, really easy to use and just be able to switch it over was absolutely perfect. And we got to the top and hey, we're still kicking down here, Rutledge. Hey, thanks, Andy. Man, it, it, we went on that trail yesterday kind of to check it all out, but there is so much stuff and so loose. That's what's one of the things it does so well, mm -hmm. to try to be able to change with that. That's where that MTS really shines. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. All right, let's get to our next question. This one's coming from Stephen Elmer. Stephen? Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, so my next question is, why did the Forerunner drop its V8 option? Was it because of demand or fuel economy or, or what? Yeah, that's a good question because certainly that was an option a few years ago, but why was the change to get just to the V6? Well, it was kind of a combination of the two. Um, our, our V6 uh, ended up making, we upgraded our V6 with v, dual VBTI, and we have 10 horsepower more than our V8 that we've since canceled. Um, since we're making more horsepower, um, there wasn't a good, you know, uh, demand sure. for the V8 anymore. So that's that's the reason for the the V8 going away. Yeah, the plus V6 makes plenty of power for for what you need. Right, and and going to the smaller engine, but with more power, you end up saving weight, which we know that's one of those things that comes back for fuel economy. It certainly helps off road having less weight out there because you've been out on the trail before. I know yep. you and your family love to get your Forerunner out there, but you know all of that stuff adds up into making a difference to trying to make you know the best SUV you can for people. And certainly we know 4Runner fans are really, really loyal in how they like it. So that's what I think is cool is if you see how technology comes into play and it helps with a smaller motor, but you get more power, better performance out of it in the long run, then everybody wins. That's right. You know, the, the fuel economy is, is very important, obviously, with the fuel prices today. So... Yeah, we want to keep get people out there and using their vehicles. So. Sure. Well, let's get to our next question. This one is coming from Steve Bloom. Steve? Um, yeah, so I've got a question uh, related to, to crawl control. So basically, how does uh, the crawl control feature work? Yeah, because it sort of acts like uh, almost like cruise control off-road, right? Essentially, it, it is like cruise control because you don't have to operate the pedals. What um, In some obstacles, you might have to uh, use two pedals. Use the brake with your left foot and the throttle with your right. And what, what the crawl mode does is it prevents you from having to do that. It controls the brake and the throttle for you and keeps you going a consistent speed both up and down. So all you have to worry about is, is steering and, and uh, you know keeping the vehicle under control because everything else is, is being done for you. And that's a huge key off-road. I mean, I remember when we were in Top Gear going through Moab, the problem is when you're trying to do two foot and, and use both feet on the pedals and you hit some big obstacles and suddenly you're hitting throttle, you're hitting brake, you end up going everywhere. That's what's so great is that consistent speed will help you get through that stuff. Right. And it can be canceled at any time just by pushing the brake pedal or the throttle. Yeah. So. But again, we can talk about it. I think it would be better to see it. Andy, show us it. how the crawl control works, buddy. All right. We are on a nice steep hill here. I'm going to reach up. I already turned off multi-train select. We're in four low. I'm just going to reach up, push one button, which is crawl control. I'm going to dial it up to, I feel medium right now, and I'm going to let my foot off the brake. And guess what? I don't know if you can see in here. My foot's off the gas. My foot's not on the brake. All I have to worry about right now is steering. 
So this is great for rock crawling or even just in situations that you don't want to do, like you were saying in Moab, where you don't want to be left foot braking, right foot accelerating. And it's a very kind of advanced maneuver that is kind of left to professionals or very experienced off-road drivers. So if I need to crank up the speed a little bit, I think we got five or six settings up here. I just turn it up, up to high. Once again, still no foot on the pedal. It's exactly what you said. It is cruise control for off-roading and it really takes the guesswork out of applying the throttle. All I have to do is keep going in a straight line or pick my line and it's doing all the work for me. I'm glad you like it, Andy. You know, working for Forerunner Marketing for the past few years, the number one technology feature that Forerunner owners love the most is crawl control. They love the ability to fit in the places that they never would have dreamed of. So they're not intimidated in taking some really tough trails because you know crawl control can get them to places. So that in combination with the multi-terrain select that we talked about earlier and electronically controlled rear diff lock, the foreigner can basically go anywhere your imagination would uh, want you to go. Well, I think we should make it to the top of this mountain right here, Nick, because this is getting gnarly, and so far we haven't even spun a wheel, I don't think. So let's try and really test this thing out. Do it. All right, fellas, nice work out there. Hey, let's get to our next question. This one comes from Slayton White. Slayton? Yeah, guys, uh, what is downhill assist control, and how does that help an outdoorsman? Well, that's a good question. You know, downhill assist control really is, is part of the great system. What's the other part of that? Well, we have hill assist control and then downhill assist control. And, you know, our, our hill assist will actually, when you're going up a very steep incline, will, will prevent the vehicle from rolling backward when you, as you transition from the brake pedal to the throttle. Very, uh, very handy for uh, city streets like in San Francisco and, and also off-roading. Um, I think we should see how it works, don't let's, you? Let's see. Andy, how does the hill assist control work? Well, I know Nick was saying multi-train select and crawl control were most forerunner off-road users' favorite applications of the technology. But my wife, who does, like I said, we have a 2012 forerunner. We, she loves the hill start assist control, the hack in the, the hack and deck, and what that allows us to do. We're sitting on a very steep hill here, probably a what, 20% grade or something I, like I'm that? I'm looking behind us, Annie. It's almost like we're, we're vertical. Yeah, we're, <laughs> it's, it's very steep. And what I'm going to do is pretend you're on a city street in San Francisco and traffic, you're at a traffic light and you need to start up. Well, there's cars behind you. There's cars in front of you. I'm going to let off the brake right now. Off. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to press on the gas. And what the Forerunner actually does for you is it applies the brake and gives you those few seconds to transfer your foot from the brake to the gas, you don't roll back, and it really takes once once again, even if you're not off-roading, it takes a lot of guesswork out of just driving around in a hilly neighborhood or San Francisco or whatever, which, I mean, even if you have a hilly driveway, which I've had in the past, I mean, it's really nice to be able to let the forerunner do the work for you. You know what's funny is that when I was learning to drive a manual transmission when I was 15 years old, my dad took me to the biggest hill in town and said, if you can drive on this, then you'll be able to, to, to drive anywhere. And it's so funny how that helps us so much today. But now that's, that's the HAC. How does the DAC work in comparison? So the downhill assist control uh, will dr allow you to drive downhill with your foot off the pedals again, and it will modulate the brakes so that you can drive in a controlled downhill at a slow speed. Um, last thing you want when you're driving downhill is for your uh, steering wheel to lock up, one of sure. the steering tires rather, um, and then you lose con you know, steering control. So let the, co let the car control that for you, prevent wheels from locking up, and go down very smooth. All right, Andy, let me see how this DAC works, buddy. Well, and that's the nice thing. In the, in the 4Runner Limited that we're in, we actually use crawl control becomes the downhill assist control. So we're just going to turn on. We're in sport low still. We're going to turn on crawl control. I'm going to dial this down to low, and I'm now letting off. I don't know if you guys got the interior camera on, but see, no foot on the brake. The 4Runner is actually applying the brakes perfectly for me. If I want to go a little faster, I can just crank it up one notch. We don't want to go too fast downhill because it's pretty bumpy and slippery, but there, we'll turn it up to medium. We're just crawling downhill. All the guesswork is taken out of this drive by the forerunner. All I have to do is get around these big holes in front of me, the big whoops, make sure I pick a smooth line, and 
that's it. I mean, we're kicked back here in the AC. You guys got the hard job down there. Nick and I are just enjoying the heck out of this view. Look at this view. And Andy, I know you're a great off-road driver and you want to show off your skills, but I think in a few years you might be out of a job. It seems like the foreigners just kind of drive you south. Well, unfortunately, I'm really kind of feeling that. So I, I'm kind of talking up all these technological advances, but you're correct because now we can take anyone. I mean, I, I actually took, I rented a forerunner up in McCall, Idaho this um, over New Year's to go up to visit some friends and my wife wanted to learn how to do some donuts in a snowy parking lot because she's from California and she doesn't see a lot of snow. And so we got her doing some donuts out in the in a parking lot and then she got stuck. And I just flipped on, crew, on crawl control for her and she got herself out of a pretty gnarly stuck. And you know what? It just it gives so much confidence to someone that doesn't have the experience in those situations. So. She was stoked, and it was kind of funny for me to just be able to tur turn on a pretty easy knob in the Forerunner and let her go. Nice work over there, fellas. So listen, they're in the trail right now. We've got a limited behind us. Let's talk about it, because on the trail, the DAC is really through the crawl control system. How is it different on this one? Yeah, you're exactly right. So the hill assist control is does not require any push, pushing of a button or anything to operate. It's just always on. Uh, downhill assist is something that you actually operate by pushing a button. It's in the overhead console if you want me to show you. Well, let's you. check it out. I want to see how it works on here. Oh, you're locking me out. Trying to be funny, huh? <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay. If you look right up here in the overhead console, we've got our uh, VSC off, A track, and our downhill assist control buttons all you know in this overhead console. Okay, so now also I notice on this one it's different. If you look at how the transfer case works, it's different on this one. Right. Um, this the limited has a full time four wheel drive system. If you buy the the four wheel drive limited, um, we've got a dial knob here which allows you to select you know um, normal high four, and then you can have high four with the center differential locked, and then low four with the center differential lock. This is, this is snazzy. There's a lot. There's a lot going on here. All right, you know what? We got to get to another question. Stephen Elmer's got another question for us. Stephen? Yeah, hey guys. So with the uh, Toyota FJ Cruiser being discontinued this year, my question is, is the Forerunner going to have the same fate or uh, is the Forerunner going to live on in the future? That's a great question. I mean, we know that keeping it wild, it, it's not just a tagline for these vehicles, right? I mean, the Forerunner's here to stay. Right, absolutely. This is the 30th year for our Forerunner, and we've invested quite a bit in this uh, this refresh, and we're continuing to invest on our corporate accessory side, developing new products, you know, and accessories for the Forerunner. It's not going away. We have a very, very loyal uh, customer base that that want to keep it wild, want to get out there and uh, and use their vehicle. Uh, the way it's intended to be used, and we want to support them. So sure. We're going to continue this Forerunner for them. And it's funny when you think about it, how far the Forerunner has come. I remember, you know, I was born in 1980, so when I was a kid, I started seeing the first generation Forerunner running around town, and, and it was such a different vehicle from everything else you saw, but it's always been like the SUV. When you think about SUVs and what they're really meant to do, a lot of them, people call SUVs a lot of different things, but a lot of those are just jacked up station wagons if you really look at what they are, but the Forerunner has always been this vehicle that's been really true to its roots and what it's been trying to do. You know, it doesn't try to hide. It just says, these are the things I'm great at and jumping in and enjoy. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, you know, the, the Forerunner was rugged when it came out in 84, and it's as rugged now. It's more rugged now, really. And it's also more plush inside. Sure. So we, we've kind of improved both sides of it. But absolutely, uh, the, the Forerunner will be around. And with our trail grade, we really hope that a lot of these FJ Cruiser buyers uh, might move over to the, the sure. trail because it's uh, it's every bit as capable. It's, it's four inches longer wheelbase, uh, you know, basically same powertrain. Uh, very similar underpinnings. Sure. Uh, it's just going to go anywhere that an FJ Cruiser would go. Well, let's get to Slayton White. He's got our next question. Slayton? Yeah, the uh, 4Runner 4x4 comes with a two-speed transfer case. So uh, when should an outdoorsman shift into the low-range 4x4? Oh, that's a great question. I've heard that one a lot before. When should people go from 4 high to 4 low? Well, you know, really 4 low is meant for uh, adding torque. You know, if you need more torque to climb up something very steep or, uh, you, you know, you're pulling a boat up a launch ramp and the launch ramp might be wet or, or you've got a really heavy boat, that's the kind of time that you shift into four low. Or in my country, 
a little bit of snow. Oh, right yeah. Time. I know you're not used to that down in uh, Atlanta. Well, with this polar vortex. <laughs> <laughs> You've been dying to say that all day. I really, I've been really getting ready for it. Yeah, but th- right now, there's so many people that are watching at home that are just covered in snow. Let's go over to the trail. Let's see how easy it is to put in for high yeah, we, we For people that just don't know. The lever. It's a lever for you. I was going to say, we're, we're yeah. still, we're, we're standard here, not metric. Yeah, so. Okay, okay. we got a nice lever, old tool. Kind of gives you that good feel, kind of like the old FJs. You're just able to, to reach in. Here, you show me. Here. Well, here, I'm going to jump in from this side, but all you got to do right here, we're in four low right now, but it just, I'm not in the driver's seat, so we're not going to shift it, but just shifts down and over real easy, but kind of good feeling in your hand. It's nice. It's kind of better than, you know, a button for me. I'm kind of old school like that, so I'd, ra- I'd rather feel it like that, but, um, yeah, I like the way I like the way they do it on the trail. The craziest part to me is that you know we've gotten to see, and it's a little bit tough without almost like a helicopter shot to see all the different range of terrain where you guys went because you just went to the highest peak we can see over here. And now I rode with Andy here on the way this morning, and I got sick just on the canyon roads getting here. And you just smiling, totally comfortable for all the stuff you guys just went over. I tell, I tell you what, what I, I was a little bit nervous to be honest with you when we first started out because I know how wild Andy can be. I know that he loves to take the vehicle to the limit, but it was really comfortable out there. We had the AC blasting, it was super comfortable, and, and I know we tackled some, some tough terrain, terrain, some big rocks, some, some sand, but it was really comfortable inside. Let's get to our next question. This one's going to come from Stephen Elmer. Stephen? Yeah, hey guys, so this sort of builds on the last question, and it's why doesn't the limited model 4Runner have that two-speed transfer case? Yeah, so let's talk about that. Why doesn't the Limited have it? It's a, yeah. it's a totally different setup, right? So, yeah, the Limited is a, a full-time four-wheel drive. It does have a two-speed transfer case. It has a high and a low range. But what it doesn't have is a two-wheel mode and a four-wheel drive mode. So uh, the full-time four-wheel drive, you know, you've got your, your 20-inch wheels, and, you know, it's less likely to be going through as, you know, rugged of a trail as the trail mode, you know, grade one will. Um, but it's every bit off-road capable. Um, but you have the full-time mode, so you, you don't have to think about it. You know, you don't have to shift anything. She's already Just keep in there. Going. It, it's, I'm still blown away. Like I said, this is actually my grocery getter. This is what I have in 2012. And we just did gnarly stuff. I mean, look at the top of that mountain. That off-camber section over there, so gnarly. I mean, I was trying to at least make Nick pucker up a little bit, and for some reason... Hey, I don't know if it was a trust in me or trust in the truck, whatever it was. He, he just, kept, just smiling kept smiling the whole time. I wanted to see a little bit of fear in his eyes because that, that's what makes me happy. But the forerunner just kind of, I guess, instilled the confidence in, in him and myself. It was just easy. Well, that's it's it's neat when you look at these and what they do because when you talk about a vehicle that has like this one in the trail, you know the fact that you got four low because you might actually need that to use on a city street. You might be pulling your boat. Out of a out of a lake somewhere, Mossy Ramp. I know you love what was it Havasu? You've spent yeah, a few days at Havasu. Spent a couple times at the river, you know. But that's one of those things that this is where it's so perfect. But also, you know, when we talk about how many people are sitting here watching this in snow, there's a ton of people out there that could hop in and use this Why and get around safely. Again? Polar vortex. Ah, that's right. And vortices. That's a whole. <laughs> the vortices is a whole different side of this. But uh, I think. When you look at these vehicles and what they offer, they have so many different things for everybody. What ended up happening with your breadcrumbs and your and your route trace there? Uh, well, other than the fact that I deleted them all when we got here, I would have, <laughs> other than a little miscue on my part, uh, we had a great little trail set up around. And the cool part about that, like I said at the beginning, if you just go off and you want to just disappear off the grid, you just push that button and it'll track you, and then you can always find your way back out, which... I'll admit I've been lost a couple times yes. in the boonies, you know, back in the day. So I I appreciate technology like that because it makes my life easier. Oh, and that's that's for sure. You know getting out there with the family. There are so many times when you think, oh, this looks like a trail. This is marked. I should go this way. That's not what it looks like when you've been out there for hours and suddenly every turn looks the same. We could have used it this morning just on our way to find base camp. Here. Holy cow. <laughs> we, I don't know where we were, but we were on some crazy roads out there, and we were both getting a little queasy. But if we if we wouldn't have had a map, we definitely needed breadcrumbs. Yes. Breadcrumbs would have been huge right there. That's what we needed. Uh, well, now we want to get some of the fan questions, uh, so we're going to get those live. Uh, and here is our first one. This one is coming from another Forerunner fan. They asked, how big of a boulder can a stock Forerunner go over? I want to go look at the side of this Limited, because when you look at this, 
the first thing I notice is on all the forerunners, ground clearance is really big on these. So how big right. of a boulder, you guys come join me over here, how big of a boulder can you go over with vehicles like these? So the forerunner has a 9.6 inch ground clearance. Um, as far as, you know, can you drive over and clear it, you should be able to clear it if it's less than 9.6. If you're going to drive over it, you really need to get out and look, you know, and make sure um, not everybody has a ruler ready to, to measure. Well, you got to scout it out. You got to see what you're there. going to do. You don't want to you don't want to get too aggressive, especially if you're out in the wild. You want to make sure you can always make it home. But I mean, we did you see when we we're up on top there and coming back around? I mean, we went over. I mean, the one rock was about that high, and we just up and over it. No problem at all. No problem. It's and, and I always tell people who've never been, it's sort of like visual chess when you look at going off-road. You have to sort of scope everything out. A lot of people, they get out, they walk the trail, they see what they have to get over. But again, that's what's cool about this forerunner, especially the trail. You know, for guys like us, seeing how many systems it has to help us. You and I are both, you know, we're, we're the dads of, of our friends now, yeah. surprisingly like the only ones. <laughs> but we're the ones that we still, we still want to be as adventurous as we were before. So for us, it's about finding a vehicle that still fits all of those needs. I, I've taken our forerunner with my daughter when she was four months old, and we've been down the Baja, driving in the Baja with her in her child seat, out in the boonies, just going to look for surf or going to find a cool beach or whatever, and we're out in the wilderness, and I couldn't feel safer having her in there. There's a lot of vehicles I might not want to have her in down in the Baja, but absolutely, our forerunner is one of them. When we, were in, uh, when we were in Iceland for Top Gear, every support vehicle we had for that shoot, when we drove up a volcano and glaciers, they were all Toyotas. And most of them totally stock, just but with a winter tire on there. And I kept looking around thinking, like, how can you do all of that same stuff that we were in these archaic 70s trucks that barely ran, and they're just driving through everything. But it's, uh, it's because they try to think about, you know, where you would want to go and how you'd want to get there and still trying to make everything work for on-road. I think that's the sort of best combo, you know? Absolutely. But I, I mean, you spend a lot more time off road than I do doing Top Gear, so I don't know. You tell me when you look at something that you want to be good for the family and good for off road. What's your checklist? Yeah, really, you know, something that's as at home on the road as it is off the road. Um, it's got to be comfortable for my passengers. You know, Nick was comfortable with Andy driving, and you know, that that's what you want. Uh, you know, he said he wanted to scare Nick, but really, realistically, when it, when it's your wife and your kid, you want them to be comfortable, right? You sure. Want to. You want them to want to come yeah, out yeah, with absolutely. you more often, and it's all about getting out there and, and you know enjoying nature and you know doing the things that the vehicle affords you the the ability to do. So, um, you know, for me, I've got to have something that can tow and and again carry all the gear that I bring and in my family comfortably. And quality, dependability, reliability—that's something that you know Toyota brand is is built on. Um, it's it's all in this vehicle. It always has been, and it, it always will be. Well, let's get to our next fan question. This one uh, was from another fan. They said, all my camping gear on that roof rack. Now, this is one area where the Forerunner really shines. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this this one is equipped with the optional crossbars. And uh, I don't know if the camera can see up there. <laughs> oh, please, up please get up there. Yeah. Yes! So up here we've got 130 pounds of, of weight that we can put on each bar, so we can carry quite a bit of uh, gear. Um, you can put a canoe up here. There's all kinds of stuff that you uh, that you can carry. I've tied or, I've tied many many gear bags to the top of a Forerunner when we're go, when we're going out in the woods. I mean big OGO 9800s and all sorts of. We had kayaks on the roof. We've done we've done some pretty crazy stuff. And you know what? So far, they're all it's been perfect. I wanted to show you really quickly on our limited grade with the smart key in my pocket, you have the ability to roll down the back window. Really? Oh, look at you, fancy wow. pants. That was your favorite feature, I remember. That, that. was awesome. <laughs> hey, look at that. But if I don't have the key, like I can't just walk up and get in here. I no, see. That's no. why they call it the smart key. Right. They're sneaky, but you know when you've got kayaks or you got stuff on the roof, the nicest thing is not worrying about bashing your glass in. That's one of these things that that makes it so good back here. Oh, plus, this is the cargo system, but what Andy calls the mobile diaper changing this, table. I, you would never believe it how many diapers I've changed on the side of the road right here. And instead of leaning in, you know, instead of leaning in here and doing it, which you know is fine, but why not get serious about it? Get yourself a nice table out here. Change your baby's diaper. This, I swear, I've changed at least 100 diapers right on this thing 
my daughter's gonna love that in about 15 years yeah. when she oh, sees she'll that watch part. <laughs> yeah. How much? How much weight can one of those take? That'll that'll hold 440 pounds. Yeah, so uh, she could get another about uh, 420 pounds before she's overweight for that piece. Easy. <laughs> you can almost change Hambone's diaper back there. That's what you know what. It, we make fun of it. That's what I love is that this is a kind of vehicle that can grow with guys like us as our family grows because it used to be camping gear. It used to be X, Y, Z. Now it's like, oh, yeah, I can change a baby it's, back there. It has become that, but that's, that's what I love about it. It's just I've done everything possible in a 4Runner, and I still find uses for it. You know, when it when, depends on what trip we have going on, there's always something new that I'm like, oh, that's cool. I can do that. Or lay everything flat in there and stuff a bunch of bicycles or mountain bikes and go mountain biking or throw a kayak on the roof. What, whatever it is, I have not run out of uses yet for this. Do you need any kayaks? I have two at the at the house. Are you trying to sell them? Yeah, my wife told me that we should get them because she's, we, oh, we got to go kayaking all the time, and then we've used them twice. No, that you know what we do here in California. We do uh, we have stand up paddle boards and you know, but I have I can't do that. My stand up paddle boards in the back of my Forerunner many times works perfectly. Oh, you see, you're that's not so all awesome. That, you're not all that smart. You're just standing by the smart man. <laughs> the smart oh, I love that. I really like that feature. All right, let's get back up here, man. This is awesome. You guys just been hanging out. Uh, we want to thank everybody for hanging out with us. Oh, we got live questions, oh, too. Oh, wow. We're going to get some live hey, questions in? Oh, good. Let's jump right to it. Uh, let's see. What is eco mode? Can it be turned off? That came from uh, Bajwa. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have not an eco mode, but an eco indicator, and it's a, a green indicator that's on your information display. It tells you basically when you're driving, you know, the optimum fuel economy. Sure. So if, you, if you're if you deep into the throttle, the light will go off. Uh, if you're light on the throttle, uh, the light will come on. And it just That's why happens. Rutledge doesn't know about it, because he just gets heavy into it every time. So it's, it's not actually a mode, mode. It, it just lets you know when you're in the zone. Right. Yeah. It's a zone, not a mode. Hmm. Right. So you can help right. optimize your best fuel mileage, hey, These days right? as fathers, we need to think about, you know, diaper money. So, you know, optimizing right. gas mileage is it's really high on my list these days. That's right. It can be uh, turned off as well through the multi-information display. Sure. Uh, John Dietrich had a question. Can I get a forerunner with a standard transmission? Good question. You know what? Uh, nobody wants that more than I do as, as well, but uh, we do offer a manual transmission in the forerunner. Okay. Uh, today. Let, just take it easy. Just let the, let the truck do what it does. Just sit back and drive. That's right. This is a really good question. There's a bunch of people who want to know, does your forerunner have stock tires? Those are the stock yes. tires that came on the trail. Yeah, yeah we, ours is a, is a 2012 trail edition. Whatever it came with, and I don't yeah, actually even know what's on it, is what is what is on it. But it's, I mean, I think we probably have, uh, what, about 30,000 miles on it now. Never changed tires, just oil changes. It's been off-road. It's been on-road. It's been road trips to Vegas or Havasu or... You know the Utah desert or Moab. It's been all over and, and down the Baja. I think it's been down the Baja three times, and you know still running strong. Love it. And people say stock tires, but we took on some pretty tough trails. Yeah. <laughs> did you see what we just did on the stock tires? Yeah. Like, they're not all. That, I mean, they're stock. They come on it, but they're chosen for a reason to be able to handle both the highway and the heavy duty off road stuff as a good balance. Sure. Right. We talked about axle articulation earlier, but it's, if you're able to keep all your tires on the ground, no matter what tire you have, it, it's better than, you know, when if you don't have enough articulation, you're going to have a tire, you know, lifting off the ground and preventing you from... I know Rutledge forward. really wants to stop 37 Super Swampers under the... Come on! I can already see that. It's jacked up in his front yard down there in Georgia. I know what you like. I like that the Canadian with the former mullet is painting me as the redneck. Just for the record, I really, I really, that's <laughs> yeah, how I know it's a good it, hangout. It, it's still a bad bet going on here, but you know, I think my hair, your beard, it's a good combo. Fair enough. We're absolutely keeping it wild. We're living keeping it wild. Right that's now. it. We're living keeping it wild. Fellas, thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part of this. It was a lot of fun. I want to make sure uh, that we thank. Uh, Nick Huey from Toyota Product Marketing, Todd Bergeson from Toyota Product Planning. Uh, of course, I want to thank Stephen Elmer, editor of Auto Guide. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, Got to thank Slayton White, editor of Field and Stream Magazine. Slayton, thanks for hanging out with us, buddy. Hey, thanks, guys. Fun time. And uh, and Steve, certainly want to thank you, TorontoTruckClub.com, and all your members too, man. You guys do a great job over there. I right, appreciate it. It's been great.
And thank you, fans, for hanging out with us. We are going to hang out here. We're going to answer some more of your questions. We're going to send you those videos later. You're going to love it. But thank you for watching. And hey, Andy Bell, thanks pleasure. Thanks I dropped the phone. Oh, you did. You always get me with that. Come on, man. No, can you catch me? All right, we're just going to stay here for a second you so I can get a keep, good shot. You keep talking. I'm going to go four by four. In. Can I ride with you this time? Absolutely. Let's get out of here. Thanks for watching.